to Hashem in the end, right? And that's what it says. Then the the land will will get its you know. It, it, then she will get a rest, right? As it says in the Swiss Parsha, it's part of the clause that the Jewish people will give the the, the Eretz Yisrael its the, its due rest. The kach, therefore, the tisa ship artecha, and then the kashbochu desires your land. Keep the laws of of tului uh, ba'aris, the mitzvahs that are are dependent upon living in the land, even the rabbanan, right? And the kashbochu desires your land. What's a lamar? What does this mean? Me nois avon, who is the one who carries the averes of the Jewish people, right? The Jewish people who are living in Israel do all these averes kasva halila. Right? Who takes the Averis from them and bears them for them? It says, Aris, Asher Malaya, the land on which those people are living. The land itself. It's the The land that dwells on it, right? The, the, sorry, the people that dwell on her, on her it carries their, their sin. Hariachai, right? And it's called, it's, uh, it's, and it's called the Hariachai, the mountains of life. So you go home and say, there's a lot more of you here. And uh, because of the time limitation, I'm not going to go through it all right now, but, but he mentions basically that the land, and this is, this is worth going into in more detail, it's part of my uh, book, Talking About Eretz Yisrael, I think it's also in Rebbe Rachamim as well, these are two books you can look at uh, in more detail, Rebbe Rachamim actually is, a, is also a website with some information, because it's really, it's very, very important, and maybe perhaps we'll come back to the position later on, Devarim. But the, the point over here he makes is that it's Israel is Mechaper every single day for the Averis of Kala Yisrael. Whether it's done accidentally, or whether it's done purposely, or whether it's done even wantonly in the end. He says the only condition is that you cannot do an Avera. And he brings other proofs in the Lushan, says the same thing as well. You cannot do the Avera knowing and saying, I'll do this Chet, because I know the land will atone for me then it won't. Because you can't do a mitzvah, an avera, on the condition to do tshuva, as the Roman points out. Same way. But you cannot do an avera on the condition that, that the symbol of mechaper for you, because that's already go, it's taking, taking advantage of a situation way beyond what's reasonable. But anybody doing an avera, it's done because of a yitzhara, or because they're, they're not knowledgeable enough, or they're knikvanish, but whatever the reason is, the land every day is mechaper for a Jew, as opposed to chutzlart, he says, where it's not true, where Yom Kippur, maybe the truth, you get a kippurah. So even if you're worried about about making mistakes in Israel, there's a there's a there's a, an opening. That's why we're still here. Look at the land today. Look at all through history. The Leshem explains the only reason when he asked the question if this is the case. So how can we ever possibly be exiled from the land? How's it possible, right? How's it possible if 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 this is all true? How is it possible that Kush Baruch Hu would have have reason to kick us off the land? So he says. He brings an example going back to the Korban Tamid, meaning that the that the, the Jewish people, the Medrash says that every night they would do the Korban Tamid ben Arabayim, and it would be mechaper, it atoned for all the averes done in the daytime, and then they would bring one the next morning that was mechaper, it atoned for all the averes done during the night. So 24 hours a day, spiritual security, non-stop, constant rectification. So the Lashem says, if that's the case, so how is it possible the Jewish people were exiled from the land? Because whatever it is they did, there was a Tumut 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Always brought the, the Korpen Tamin. The continual offering. So he explains, because they did the Averis knowing that the next morning the Korpen Tamin could be Mechaper. Or that afternoon the Korpen, the Korpen Tamin would, would be Mechaper. So Kosh Baruch says, no, now you're taking advantage of the situation that the chalal is not, it's not nice. Lona chaz, lona yi, right? So therefore, I'm not going to let your averas be wiped away by the land. She's not going to carry those averas. And they built up it until eventually there was korban by Yisrishon, korban by Sheni, you know, Galus, but aside from that, the Jewish people, and he goes one step further, the, the Ramak even adds a phenomenal concept that he says, that it says, Zeshar Hashem Tzadikim Yavovo, right? It's a pasuk from Tehillim, say in Hallel, this is the gate of, of Hashem, so they can go through it. They come through it. And we know Zeshar Hashem from, from Shar Shemaim that Yaakov Avinu says when he wakes up in the morning from his dream, he calls her Israel, certainly Hara Maria, but calls her Israel Shar Shemaim. So therefore, Zeshar Hashem is talking about Eretz Israel, all of Eretz Israel, 
And the Pasuk concludes by saying, Tzadikim Yavovo, Tzadikim will come through it. So he comes and he says a remarkable concept. I mean, this is, this is so hard to believe, but, but he says it, the Ramak, he can rely upon it. And he says that, therefore, anybody who lives in Eretz Israel, who's not making the mistake we just spoke about before, doing the best they can, on whatever level they're holding up, they have a shame tzaddik, automatically. In Chutzlart, you have to work like crazy to get a shame tzaddik as far as Shemaim is concerned. Because you can fool yourself some of the time. You can fool, you know, other people a lot of the time. But you can't fool the Kodesh Baruch Hu any of the time. To have a shame tzaddik with some other people is one thing. But shame tzaddik with such Shemaim, that has to be real. He says you have a shame tzaddik with such Shemaim. If you live in Eretz Israel, that's what he says. That's so the first thing a person thinks to himself. <laughs> look at these industry. Look at, look at Ben Yehuda's tree. Look at all the people doing terrible things here. They're not doing it because they rely upon the land to atone for them, but they're, but they're doing terrible things. How can they... Pop? He says, even if the person looks like a Russia to you, they have a shame tzaddik as far as the Kodesh Baruch Hu is concerned, which would explain a lot of things, particularly the success of Israel at this stage of history, the phenomenal design, divine, design, divine, providence, the Shmaya against hundreds of millions of enemies who live for the day to wipe us off the face of the earth. Because Baruch Hu still loves us. Still is the land. Still have a shame tzaddik. So Gemara says, the Gemara in, in Pesuvah says, better to live in a town that's majority Gentiles in Eretz Israel than to live in a town that's a majority of Jews. We're talking about from Jews, not talking about Kavanim over here, but from Jews in Chutzlarts. For so many important reasons that he only touches on, there's a whole safer here. What I just spoke about right now is just the beginning of it. Just a, we just touched on a little bit of the topic, the idea. And there's a whole section about the schus of being in Israel once Mashiach actually comes. Huge difference it makes. Parshish Bahar, Eretz Israel. It's chashuv, it's important. Before a person rejects Eretz Israel on any level, or whatever justification, whatever reasoning, they have to understand what they're rejecting and how it matters to Kodesh Baruch. The Marathi made that mistake. All through history, the Jewish people have been making that mistake, and the Gaulus is now 3,000. 320 some odd years old, to include um, the entire time. Because even when we came, there's a realm. We weren't completely there, so to speak. We have to change that. And the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Vemelech has written, right? Our Pi Kodesh Baruch Hu, Atata Kum Terchem Tzion. You will get up and show mercy to Tzion. The ghoul is almost here, you can feel it's in the air, and was talking about a gog and a gog. And everyone quotes that pasuk. There's a song for that pasuk. But the last point, That connection, that bond between B'nai Israel and Eretz Israel, vis-a-vis Yisrael Sabo, Yaakov Avinu, who became Yisrael Sabbat again, is what we're all about. And that's why the Gemara concludes by saying there are three wonderful gifts given to the Jewish people, and all of them are nicked to be Yisuri. They're all acquired through difficulty and through suffering. And Messir is nefesh, because that's the currency of the world to come. Torah, Eretz Yisrael, and Elam Abah. And based upon the way that most people look at, at Eretz Yisrael today, it should say Eretz Yisrael, Torah and Olam Abba, because it should be going in ascending order. But it says Eretz Yisrael, it says, it says, it says, sorry, it should say Eretz Yisrael, Torah and Olam Abba. Instead it says, Torah, Eretz Yisrael, Olam Abba. Because apparently, you need the middle one to go from the first one to the third one. Eretz Yisrael is the place we put into practice in a real way all that we learn in Torah. And Olam Abba Eretz Yisrael, El Yon, the upper reality of Eretz Yisrael, is we finally are able to appreciate and enjoy the fruits of our efforts for having done so in our lifetime.